Good day, folks, and welcome to another edition of Lumberjack Logic. I'm your host, Neil Johnson. Folks, you're going to love this piece because Ashley Merchant went on ABC News, that's right, mainstream media, and she completely eviscerated the arguments laid out against her. This in front of an ABC host who was obviously, well, let's say he leaned to the left side of things. But as you watch this, it just keeps getting better. She keeps delivering the hits. Ashley Merchant, who represents Michael Roman, he's a former Trump campaign official and a co-defendant in this case, was the lawyer who filed that motion that rocked this prosecution, revealing the romantic relationship between District Attorney Willis and the now former special prosecutor in this case, Nathan Wade. That motion to disqualify Willis from the case was denied by Judge Scott McAfee. But he nevertheless excoriated Fonnie Willis for how she handled the hiring of Wade and how she testified on the stand saying, quote, an odor of mendacity clung to this case. Ashley Merchant joins us now. Thanks for being with us. Uh, Thanks for so having Judge me. McAfee, you bet. So Judge McAfee recently said you and the other co-defendants in this case can now appeal his decision to deny your motion to disqualify Fonnie Willis. Will you? What will you ask for? Yes, that's what we're actually doing now. So we're preparing our appeal. He gave us permission, but in Georgia, we have to get also the permission of the Court of Appeals. So that's the next step. So we've got 10 days to ask the Court of Appeals to grant that same permission. If they do, then the case will go to the Court of Appeals. If they don't, we will ask the Supreme Court also to, to grant it. Now, remember, Ashley Merchant is the attorney for Michael Roman, so she's fighting that battle. But guess who gets to benefit from it? That's right, Donald Trump. Because as this gets pushed back, it goes beyond the election. And this isn't going to happen. You heard her talking about the timeline there. And eventually it's going to get appealed, most likely, to the Georgia Supreme Court, no matter what. Okay, But this is where the Democrats continue to screw up. Because of their DEI candidates, I know she was elected. But nonetheless, she was put forward by others. And she is the DEI hire basically and she's incompetent she's got all this stuff going on all this corruption and it's all coming out and they've done themselves in again i want to come back to that sequence but first you said in in your statement after judge mcafee's ruling that denied this motion funny willis uh is not disqualified uh that you nevertheless feel vindicated by judge mcafee's order why you know, there was a lot of tension filing this motion. Um, it was difficult, and I was called a lot of different things, a liar, di you know, different motivations in filing it, everything other than just doing my job. And I knew I was just doing my job, so I was very happy that, that Judge McAfee saw the things that I saw, saw the um, the indecent ways that, that certain folks responded and, you know, just the obstruction. Everyone was trying to <coughs> obstruct us from getting evidence. Um, you know, they filed a ton of motions to quash subpoenas, called me a liar repeatedly, tried to try to not even get this motion heard. So I felt very vindicated with his statements that this was something more than than, you know, just lies or, you know, had any improper motives, anything like that. So, Ashley, I have to ask you, you described the process here. You've got the Judge, judge McAfee's permission to take appeal in, at this point. You've got, uh, you're going to go to the appeals court, perhaps the Supreme Court. What do you say to people who say this is an attempt by Donald Trump and the other defendants, Michael Roman, your client, just to delay, delay, delay until after the election to get this out uh, of the campaign? You know, and I've heard that a lot. I've heard that as a criticism, but the best way to avoid delay would be for Miss Willis to step aside. Bingo! Fannie Willis could just remove herself, but she won't. We all know that because as she sips her gray goose, not with Nathan Wade anymore because she broke that off. Because first she dumped Nathan personally and then she dumped him from the case. She could have been the one to leave, remind you. I, I tell you, she could have left. The option was given that either one of them could leave, but she will not. Because as she sips her Grey Goose, which she knows she loves, she's going to be lamenting the fact that she is a black woman who has been mistreated by the man. And she's going to go on another church tour and talk about how... No one will impeach her impeccable character. That's right, people, because that's who she is. She's a victim. She is a complete perennial victim. She could have stepped aside originally. She could still step aside. If she chose to do that, there would be no delay because we wouldn't be able to appeal. So she could choose to step aside in this case, could move forward. But, you know, 
just because something might delay a case doesn't mean that I can avoid taking a legal path that I think helps my client, I think is the fair result. We just want to do process trial here. We just want a fair trial. And this is the only way that we can preserve his right to a fair trial is by continuing to fight this disqualification. Ms. Merchant is so good at this. She just lays it all out there. But look, they stick the mugshot up of Michael Roman. Why? Because the mainstream media is still trying to peddle a narrative. And the fact of the matter is the real criminal in this case is Bonnie Willis, is Nathan Wade. They should put mugshots of them up. But the problem is they haven't been arrested because that's how our justice system works. Even though Bonnie Willis will tell you that because she's a black woman, she's treated so unfairly. Who's getting arrested? And when a black man like Harrison Floyd does get arrested, she wants to keep him there without bail. And this motion that you filed, you know, triggered this na national spectacle of the district attorney of, F of Fulton County on the witness stand herself. You're questioning her about what you believe are grounds for her disqualification. She's pushing back pretty hard. Uh, at one point, she accused you of being confused about the facts. Just I want to take you back to that moment from right now. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. My favorite moment of the trial. And Willis also said you were lying several times during the trial. So I, I, how do you respond to that, that, that really you're just throwing sand in the gears of a prosecution of someone, of people, including your client, uh, accused of very, very serious crimes against Georgia state law and against the American democracy? It's actually a really easy answer because 99% of what we alleged was not in dispute. So all of the facts that I alleged back in January, they did not dispute, probably 99% of them. The only facts that ever were in dispute were really when the relationship started. So, you know, by filing this motion, there were a lot of things that were not known, but later were actually agreed to by the state. And so, the, you know, all these things that said, oh, you're a liar, you're a liar, 99% of them were proven. And the other 1% that are in dispute are things like when the relationship started. And we believe that we proved that the district attorney was not telling the truth and that the special prosecutor was not telling the truth when they said that it started after she hired him. But that's really the only thing that's in dispute at this point. This is one of the biggest points. They denied the relationship until they could not deny it any longer. They accused Ashley Merchant of lying when in fact they were covering the whole thing up until they couldn't cover it up anymore. Um, as far as her allegations that you know, that my client should be on trial, not her. We certainly weren't trying to put the district attorney on trial. We were trying to, to bring forward and bring to light the efforts that we thought should disqualify her. And have you done all this in the interests of your client, Michael Roman, or his co-defendant, Donald Trump, who's running for president? 100% for my client. And I did this and I filed this motion on my own. I, um, you know, did all the investigation, only talked to my client about it. My client knew about the motion. Obviously, he approved it before I filed it. But this was not some type of a colluded effort between other co defendants or anything like that. And you can see that. That's evident because if you look at the hearings that happened within the week after I filed my motion, Donald Trump's lawyer wasn't even sure if they were going to join it at that point. Ah, the wonderful people of ABC News working so hard to try and get Ashley Merchant tied up with Donald Trump when she's defending a completely separate client, although they are all part of the same suit. So Donald Trump is benefiting greatly. But remember, Michael Roman was the top op one of the top opposition researchers in Washington, D.C. Fonnie Willis was a fool for ever bringing him into this. So it's clear that they hadn't even made that decision yet whether or not they were going to join it. They wanted to do their own investigation. So I think it's very obvious that we were on an island at the beginning and we were the only ones pursuing this. And then other people, once they saw all the merits to our argument and saw all of the investigative efforts and knew what really happened, then they joined on and they were wonderful to do that. But they didn't do that at the beginning. And so I think that answers your question as far as if, if we were filing it for someone else's benefit. So very obvious. Again, it just keeps getting delayed. And furthermore, they're not going to be able to prove their points because remember, the judge dismissed six of the charges, the biggest one with the phone call with Brad Raffensperger. Hey, get some sound money, people. Go check out my sponsor, Midas Gold Group, MidasGoldGroup.com, or call me at 480-360-3000. You can also text Lumberjack to 232-425, and you get free silver with a qualifying order by simply mentioning this show. These people are veteran owners. They're not commissioned salespeople. You're going to get some great product. I buy the stuff directly from them as well. And I just, I just don't trust the American dollar anymore. We'll see you on the next episode. Peace out.